Fulani Esme sent powerful message. A serious warning to Tinumbu. <clears throat> Everybody is against Tinumbu, left, right, and center. But you think uh, Tinumbu is bothered. Mm, but there's something that is going to bother him. We know that Fulani, they have their own on one side. But the Nigerian people, especially those who voted for Tinumbu, are crying of hunger that he has made life miserable for them. Majority of them cannot even. They can't even drive now. They will keep their car at home. They keep their cars at home and be hopping on uh, uh, public transport. Car owners. You know, when you say somebody is a car owner, you know uh, what it means. But what we are talking now is uh, this message being sent and the serious warning to Tinumbu by this uh, Fulani Esmen. What do they have to say? Let's know what they are talking about. The chairman of Mieti Allah Katahore in the north central region, Alaji Gidadu. Idris Bebeji has issued a plea to the federal government regarding the detention of their national president, Dr. Abulai Budejo Bilu. EST, uh, DSS told us that uh, they don't know what Nigerians are talking about, that uh, this man is not in their detention. They don't, they don't have him. So he's been back and forth, back and forth. So why? So the man is still missing. Okay. Well. Well, the detention of their national president, Dr. Budeju, by security authorities in Abuja, expressing concern over the situation. Bebeji emphasized the need for urgent intervention to secure Budeju's plea, uh, release, highlighting his role as the primary provider for his family. Wow. Wow. <laughs> in a statement, Bebeji appealed to President Bola Metinubu to use his influence to facilitate Budejo's release, stressing the importance of reuniting with his family and allowing him to resume his responsibilities. The lack of a communicating or communication and transparency regarding Budejo's whereabouts has added to the distress faced by both the association and his family. Bebeji also addressed the allegations surrounding Budejo's arrest particularly the accusation of operating an illegal vigilante group. He clarified that the said organization was properly registered with relevant authorities adhering to all necessary procedures and supported by appropriate documentation. According, according to Bebeji, the vigilante group was established with the aim of promoting peace and enhancing security within the state. The uncertainty surrounding Budejo's detention and the nature of the allegations against him have, key, have caused anxiety within the Mieti Alakato Hore community and concerns about due process and fair. Bebeji urged for a swift resolution to the situation, emphasizing the importance of upholding the rule of law and protecting the rights of individuals involved. In conclusion, Bebeji he treated the call for government intervention to address Budejo's detention and ensure a just and transparent process moving forward. He expressed hope for a speedy resolution that would alleviate the distress faced by both Budejo's family and the wider association. The message conveyed by Alaji Gidado Idris Bebeji, the chairman of Mieti Halakatahore in the North Central Region, holds significant importance due to its appeal for justice, transparency, and respect for human rights. Bebeji's plea highlights the crucial role of the federal government in ensuring the fair treatment of individuals who, such as Dr. Abdullahi Belu Budeju, who are detained by security authorities. <laughs> by advocating for Budeju's release and addressing the allegations against him, Bebeji underscores the need for due process and accountability within the legal system. Moreover, his message emphasizes the impact of Budeju's detention on his family and community, emphasizing the broader societal implications of such actions. Overall, Bebeji's powerful message serves as a reminder importance of upholding the rule of law protecting individuals' rights and fostering a society built on principles of justice, justice and fairness. 
You know, when the guy was talking about uh, the family of uh, Bodejo and the, uh, the association, and again, calling on Tinubu to intervene, to use his office to intervene. What has uh, Bodejo done? Because uh, from the fillers we have got, we've gotten, like uh, the accusation was that uh, he went to go and organize uh, illegal uh, vigilantes. But uh, the group is telling us that uh, they followed the process, everything was followed up. So, like in Nigeria, whatever... The more you look, the less you see. On the government side, they say they don't know what people are talking about. That the man they didn't he's not in their custody, but not that they did not arrest him or they didn't invite him. But he said they said he's not in their custody. But the association, the military said this man has been being with them. Okay, that's another thing. One thing again is that these people, the reason why I was laughing, this same set of people are talking about rule of law. And what were the things that uh, Namde Kanu was accused of? Because I remember this a uh, Northerners, Mietiala, whatever you want, want to call them, they were telling Buari that Buari must not release him Nam Dekano. He must not release him Nam Dekano. The reason why they are still holding Nam Dekano was that ESN was established, this and that, IPOB and all of those uh, story. So how can you now come and say you are not talking about rule of law, even when the government or the uh, the court has already the, uh, asked the government or for the release of a uh, ask for the release of a uh, Nam Dekano? These guys. Threatening to you know, uh, worry that Buari must not release the name canon. So these same people are not talking about a rule of law. <laughs> what an irony! The same set of people are telling us about his family. So Nam the canon does not have family. No, he does not have uh, his own uh, people as well. Like what they say, what is good for the goose is good for the gander. Some people don't want things to happen to them, but when it happens to other people, they say kill him, nail him, crucify him, and all of that. Both the government, both the full announcement, but all of them, the Nigeria setting is just nonsense and rubbish. Selfishness, selfishness. If it is me, then you have to, you have to take, you have to consider me. But if it, it is other person, other people, no, crucify the person. How can the DSS tell us that uh, they don't know this man is not in their detention? Did you arrest him or not? That is the question. Yeah, uh, it's a scam. Honestly, it is a scam. I don't even know how we are going to get out of this mess. One thing I have uh, realized again with all these things happening uh, people complaining here and there, insecurity, economic hardship, and all of you, all of that. In fact, uh, I think uh, these uh, politicians say uh, they love it when things are getting worse like this, things are getting bad. It's like they love it because I see no reason why. The government, the, the past government experienced this kind of it. The people were complaining, and the same people who were not in power then, they are not in power. They were complaining about other people who were in government and the situation of the country. Now, they are bringing the, the receipts of uh, Sinubu, all the tweets he made, talking about uh, there was no government uh, during the time of uh, Gula Jonathan. Oh, the Christians are being, man, uh, you know, are being maltreated, and all of those stories. Now they are there. It's like they are, they they derive pleasure in all this uh, hardship. Let people be talking about them. Oh, they will be calling their name. Oh, what is this? Uh, you look to that Jonathan did this. Uh, this is like they love it. You know, that is what I'm even looking for because we can't be you can't continue doing one thing over and over again and you expect different results. I don't understand. This like they love it. These politicians they love it. They love it. We complain the same thing over and over again. There are prof uh, uh, solutions that have been profiled. These are the things that needed to be done. They won't do it. They themselves, before they came to power, they will profile solutions. Now they are there. Tinubudu has been crying for rest uh, restructuring. You see, talk. He said now restructuring is not his uh, business again. That's a. Uh, it's not. It's not yet time for restructuring. So I'm just trying to even digress. But the warning that uh, this Fulani has made, or sent a serious warning that they sent to Tinubu. Whether he's going to take it or not, it's a different thing altogether. So guys, let's see your opinion and have your take on this. Thank you.